Welcome to the Auto Success Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is Payam Zamani from One Planet. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, normally I ask a question, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, but I want to skip that and go back to 1994. Let's talk about when you founded AutoWeb. Tell me about the who's, the when's, the why's. Um, you know, give us a lowdown. Wow, that's a long time. They're almost 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so 1994, I had just graduated from UC Davis. Mm -hmm. And I had just come to the, well, I had come to the US about six years prior as a refugee, mm -hmm. escaping religious persecutions in Iran as a Baha'i, making it to the US. And uh, uh, my brother worked for Microsoft. And uh, one day he called me, he said that I've been in the market by Honda. To my surprise, Honda does not have a website. And I'm thinking, what is he talking about? What's a website? So <laughs> I've never been online. So um, he, he, you know, if, unless you are 50 or older, you're not gonna understand what I'm talking about. Uh, he came to my apartment, set me up on CompuSurf. And uh, so I, I learned, I, I figured out what, what the internet is all about. And um, I had owned a lot of cars up to that point. Um, I was 23, I had owned 16 cars up to that point. I oh, loved wow. buying cheap cars, selling them, buying and so on. And we decided that it would be awesome to start a website that would basically arm the consumer with a lot of information about cars. And it was out of passion. We would have never thought that this would become uh, a, a big business. Mm -hmm. uh, it was us really liking cars and wanting to do something about cars. But then, you know, it just happened to be uh, the right business at the right time. And we met the right people. Uh, AutoWeb was one of the first few um, internet companies ever. I think that Yahoo was just launched at about the same time. And um, I mean, there, there are fewer than 5,000 domains registered. Oh, wow. So let's, let's fast forward, but not too far. Yeah. <laughs> no, not too far. I'm going to hit pause at 1999. Okay. Uh, so right before the turn of the century, um, you had an IPO. Tell me, tell me about that. So those are crazy times. You know, I was 28th. Uh, it was my, my 28th birthday had just passed. And um, we were we were ready for our IPO, but prior to the IPO, uh, the the board of the company uh, in January of that year uh, basically decided that I was too young to be the CEO of a company that was going public. And I had built a company at that point. I had prepared the company for an IPO, but uh, they decided that it was time to bring on board somebody with gray hair uh, who would take us to the next stage, and. Uh, uh, it's not easy to find somebody with gray hair who's passionate about changing an industry and hustle and try to get things done in a way that a 20-some year old with a vision, uh, yeah. you know, was willing to do. The bottom line is that um, uh, the, the CEO came on board and the company went public. Uh, and those were amazing few days. I mean, one thing about AutoWeb that was really interesting was that Second only to eBay, AutoWeb was the only, pop, uh, only uh, profitable internet company at that point. Oh, there wow. were only two profitable internet companies, and AutoWeb was second to eBay, the only other one. And um, so uh, the company had a great IPO. We wanted to sell 5 million shares. We had buyers for 95 million shares. We wanted wow. to sell at a price of 8 to 10. We ended up uh, setting a price at 14. It opened at 27 and went up to 40 and so on. Um, I vividly remember the next day opening up uh, Wall Street Journal. And one of the headlines was AutoWeb worth more than Rolls Royce, uh, <laughs> which was true. Rolls Royce was sold, I think, for $500 million. And AutoWeb was worth $1.2 So interesting. Interesting times. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know, not, now you're back involved with AutoWeb again. You yes. have the gray hair. so I prepared. do have the gray hair, so I qualify. <laughs> yeah, yes. Right. You definitely qualify now. We both do. <laughs> and less hair, so yes. that, that, that works as well. So. <laughs> you got two, two thumbs up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so what, what's, what's the plan now? I mean, not, now, now you, you're, you're back involved with mm -hmm. AutoWeb. Uh, what's, what's your plan moving forward? So over the years, I have been, of course, watching the company mm -hmm. and in agony. 
watching this company that, that I helped start uh, doing so poorly and a company that had such a massive opportunity and potential. And frankly, many of the people you see in the online automotive internet world today came from uh, AutoWeb. And um, so just seeing that the company was not meeting its full potentials, it was not, it was not um, running on all cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, was, was bothering me. It felt like an orphan of a company. So uh, a couple of times I came close to potentially buying the company. But then uh, last year, it, was, it turned out to be the right opportunity at the right time uh, to buy back the company, take it private, so we could uh, build a company. Uh, it's, of course, uh, fundamentally a different time. And what worked back then doesn't necessarily work now. Not even one employee was still with the company from back then. Oh, really? So, so it's, it's a very different uh, business. But I think that there are massive opportunities still uh, within the industry and for AutoWeb. Just a couple of, couple of uh, uh, items that really get me excited. One is uh, that the new car industry has changed and is changing. Uh, it's not just the EVs, but it's also how EVs are retailed, which is uh, affecting how all cars are going to be retailed, which is not, frankly not that different of an evolution that we went through back in the 80s when there are a bunch of dealerships that were trying, you know, one price selling. Yeah. Then you come in the early 90s when Saturn was trying a new way of selling cars. Well, these evolutions have happened in the past, and there's another one that's happening now. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool to be a part of that again and be able to play a role. And then, of course, used cars. You look at what has happened to used cars in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, mm -hmm. that uh, this comment may make a few people a little bit unhappy, but I feel like a few companies, well-meaning companies, took, uh, took uh, basically a business that was inefficient and made it even less efficient. And many of those companies are not doing well these days because you can only continue for so long if you're, make, if you're losing money on every transaction. It's not something that can go on for perpetuity. So I feel like we have an opportunity to really bring about the best uh, ways of online retailing to those who are the used car retailers, but not be the retailer ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to provide the platform. We want to provide the tools, the best tools that we can, but we don't intend to compete with the retailers themselves. We want to make them better at what they do. Cool. Now you mentioned that that you didn't that you know when you when you just reacquired AutoWeb that mm -hmm. uh, not not a single of the original employees was there. Yeah. Well, you got one. You got one. You got you. That's uh, right. Is your brother is your brother involved? No. Uh, he actually thought I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> that they, you know I'm, I'm buying back this company. He's not. He's running a company, a software company called Caspio. So he's busy. Cool. Cool. Well, how many how many employees did you have when when you had your IPO? I think we had about 120 or 30, and uh, today AutoWeb has about 100, but AutoWeb is now part of a larger, uh, it's, it's an independent business that's owned by One Planet Group, and One Planet Group has a few hundred employees. So the nice thing about being part of this portfolio is that AutoWeb has access to you know, a large development and design and product people mm -hmm. uh, that it has its own, but it has this access to this reservoir of, of great talent that they can jump in and help with whatever AutoWeb needs help. So it's got 100 employees, but it has access to a lot more. You know, that's, that's a lot with auto success. You know, we, we, have, we have the kind of the same benefit with Babcocks. You know? we, yeah. we, we have a team that can do everything that we need to do, but when we need more help, there's you know, 1,700 The mothership teams. is there. Yeah, the mothership is yeah, there. Exactly. And they come down and, and take care yeah. of whatever needs done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That, that's, you know, that's exactly the kind of you know, approach that we've taken. That's great. Well, I want to ask you something personal now. Yeah. Uh, when, you're, when you're not working, you know, what, what do you enjoy doing? So I've got two daughters. And they definitely keep me busy. Uh, my wife and I would love to travel. And uh, uh, in fact, my younger daughter will be going to college also this year. So my wife and I were like planning <laughs> August 15th. <laughs> you know, where are we headed? Where are you going? <laughs> but um, but uh, one of the things I like to, I mean, under one planet, we have a bunch of different businesses. So uh, when I'm not working on AutoWeb, I, I spend quite a bit of time on those other businesses. Mm -hmm. And, but also I love to fly. And, uh, I love this whole idea of BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. 
And so every couple of years, I give myself something that I need to learn. And two years ago, I decided that I wanted to learn how to fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me about three months, got my license, got then my instrument license, and I love to fly. So I, I fly probably two, 300 hours a year. And I like to do a lot of uh, East Coast, West Coast on a slow plane. So it um, takes me two days each mm -hmm. direction. Uh, so I cannot be in a rush, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but I really enjoy it. it it's, it's one of those skills that I feel like um, I will never stop learning. Um, and it's pretty cool. Keeps me busy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you about leads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're, what what's the difference between a good lead and a bad lead? Mm. How do we measure that, and 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 how does that change the value of the lead? Mm. I mean, if you think about uh, a, the value of a lead, it's really a function of how much you paid for that lead, mm -hmm. what's the close rate of that lead, and how much time did you have to put into that lead. So a lead can be cheap, can have low close rate. You go like, okay, well, maybe the math will work, but not if you have to put a lot of time into that, you know, into that lead to bring about a close rate. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, a lead can be expensive. Even with high close rate, the math may not work. So I think that finding that right balance is really key. So basically, uh, the, the right uh, relationship between the price and propensity to close. Uh, for that specific lead. That is the kind of right relationship, the right balance that you want to be able to find. Typically, very good leads are very expensive, cost prohibitively expensive. So you want to find the right lead for the right price uh, that, 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 can, that can make the math work. Uh, but typically what happens is that to generate those leads that financially make sense, you need to be really, really good at it. I mean, you look at what you guys do, you know, I, I cannot do, uh, this is not my skill set. So if I try to do it, it'll be expensive, it won't look good, they won't be as effective. And so that's kind of lead generation is the same thing, that as a dealer, as a, in a sense, as a consumer of leads, if I want to become an expert and do it on my own, the chances are I will make it a cost prohibitive uh, enterprise for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be very hard to make it work. Uh, and there are companies that they do that. They worry about the probability of conversion at every step of the way. They worry about, you know, just to the nth degree, how I can do the best possible SEM. I can have the best possible pages to maximize conversion and so on. So I can bring about a lead that I can sell for let's say $20, but for a dealer to generate that, it could probably cost them 80. And that is what we're good at and we like to become better at. You know, it's interesting. I, I've, you know, I've when I've looked at leads and thought about mm -hmm. that before, I hadn't really ever considered like the opportunity cost, the time to actually, yeah, turn the lead into a to close the lead. That, yeah, that's that's an, that's like a, a a new idea. Um, is is there a way to measure that? Yeah, I mean, it's this, if you just look at the close the close rate of a lead, you know, you know that every lead requires a follow up. So if your close rate is one percent and every lead requires even five minutes of follow-up, but it took you know, 100 leads to close one, that's 500 minutes. Oh. So, uh, so if your close rate is 10%, well, it wasn't 500 minutes, it was 50 minutes. So, so yeah, I mean, but I think that's an important math that everyone should do. For a final question, mm -hmm. I kind of want to ask you, it's two-parted. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we, brought, we mentioned EVs, mm -hmm. and then everybody's thinking inventory. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, where well, the inventory is coming back, I want to, so I want to ask you kind of, you know, when do you think things will normalize if they, if they ever do, or if there's a new normal and then EVs, um, you know, the EV adoption is moving, but it's, it's not moving nearly as quickly as what a lot of people had thought. What are your thoughts on those two topics? Yeah. Well, with the uh, inventories out there, we definitely see that that is coming back, um, you know, and then you can see that in, in multiple different ways. Um, you know, one is how, what the close rates are. So basically how quickly leads are converting into transactions, but also just the demand in the market that as inventory levels go up, the demand, you know, from car dealers ultimately is higher, uh, for getting access to leads. Um, and, and same thing with EV. I mean, and we've, we've seen that, uh, that, uh, the, the, the percentage of cars sold that EVs has, have gone up and it's no longer a Tesla game. Uh, it yeah. is a game that so many different. Uh, car makers are participating in. I personally have owned four uh, Teslas in the past. 
but now if I want to buy an EV, the chances are I will not buy a Tesla. Not because I don't like Tesla, I just think that their car is better than Tesla. Uh, so it's, it's a good thing. It's, it's good to be a consumer interested in EVs these days. And that market share keeps growing. And, uh, and it seems that as that market share uh, keeps growing, uh, the, uh, the, that evolution around the way cars are retailed is expediting, uh, is gaining even more momentum. So it becomes even so much more important uh, for people like us that we help car dealers sell more cars and car dealers to stay ahead of the game because it is even though it's the EVs that are leading that, it is trickling down to all vehicles that are sold in the country. One of the things that we're going to release in the next 12 months is just analysis and data that we have access to that we've never shared. And we're gonna start sharing that information. Uh, we have access, generate about 600,000 new car leads and thousands of used car leads on a monthly basis that give us a lot of data about shifts that we see in the market uh, by city, by brand, by model, by trim, all over the country. And we're gonna be sharing some of that information so people can see what we see mm -hmm. under the hood. So, so you'll be able to share with a, you know, say a dealer in Akron, Ohio, mm -hmm. who's selling a certain vehicle, you'll be able to share with them, you know, 20% of people that look at that vehicle also look at the trim levels or also look at the gas mileage. So you'll be able to tell them what, like what is important to the consumers in their market when they're yeah. looking at that vehicle. I mean, it's like that precise, right? So if you think about our leads, um, about five to 10% end up buying a car within 30 days but about 50% buy a car within 90 days. So we got, we're, we're looking into the future as we generate these leads. What's gonna sell in the next 90 days in Akron, Ohio? Well, that's pretty interesting. And then if you look at the past 90 days, I can tell you with a high level of accuracy, uh, how like, let's say, uh, I don't know, Camry versus, uh, Camry versus uh, Accord uh, is, going to perform against each other in Akron, Ohio in the next 90 days. It, and also where they've been in the last 90 days. We can kind of forecast. We can forecast hypothetically what percentage of the market will be EVs. And this can really help, uh, I think, a lot of car dealers with also inventory management by looking at, uh, by looking at this data. Now we have access to it anyways. Um, at the minimum, it's interesting to look at. Yeah. And I think a lot of people will love to see it. Uh, but it may be useful in different ways. Well, yeah, it seems like if 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 five, if five to ten percent of the people transact right away, and then so you've got ninety to ninety-five percent of the people that aren't going to transact for up to ninety days, that's three months in the future. I know what cars to buy at the auction. I mean, I know I know Absolutely. that I know that fifty percent of those people are going to buy in the next. I mean, that's 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 very valuable. Yeah, I know that I need you know five you know Camrys that are two years old with less than thirty thousand miles. Yeah, it makes it easy. And we're talking about not small set of data. This basically 10% of all new cars sold in the U.S. go through our platform. So, mm -hmm. so that's, I mean, that represents a good chunk of the market. So the data is fairly reliable. Fine. is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we say goodbye? I mean, the only thing is that, um, I, you know, I never really left the automotive industry, uh, but it's really good to be back and kind of like, feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the midst of it, spending the day with you and, yeah. and seeing the garage. And, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in it, which is, which is really good feeling. So thank you for the opportunity and welcoming me back. Yeah. Well, welcome. Actually, I, I have one last question. Sure. You, you said you had 16 cars by the time you were uh -huh. 23. You've had four Teslas. Mm -hmm. when you, and you said that you would look at a different EV the next time you buy an EV. I, I got to know, what do you got your eye on? What's next? So... I haven't decided yet what I'm going to buy, but I like Mercedes. Uh, I think Mercedes has done a really good job uh, with their EVs. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit more time. Truth be told, my, I love EVs. I love the idea of being environmentally friendly. I studied environmental toxicology. But I got to say that there are cars I like more than the EVs that are currently available. Mm -hmm. But that will be my wife's car. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, you can drive it. You can drive it from time. I will to time. drive it too. She has a Model X right now, which, frankly, I'm the one who's driving it most of the time. Uh, but the car that I've been wanting to own always, and I, I, I don't collect cars. I have like one car at a time. I want to actually buy an old Defender. So 
I've never owned one. I've, you know, I guess that's my teenage dream, and I'm, I'm going to go back to it. Nice. Well, if you, if you want, if you want to uh, make some videos working on it, I got. There studio, you go. I got exactly. For you. Exactly. <laughs> well, Payam, thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thank you for taking the time to join us for this Auto Success Executive Spotlight. We hope to see you again soon.